and go for it. Thank you very much. I have to warn you, this tool doesn't work every time. That's that's for the thing. Uh, my um, I have a problem in life is that I don't believe in problems. I don't think they really exist. I think the problems are actually a, uh, a, a special vision, which um, which actually uh, stresses on the fact that there is a, a distortion between our wish and, and reality. And this distortion can come from the fact that um, our wish is not so clear or uh, that uh, our uh, uh, that our uh, uh, understanding of reality is not uh, complete. So this is uh, why I, I, I found that it was quite interesting to uh, focus on what was going on uh, when we were, when we were uh, building up a solution and applying and see what happens. So um, to cut a long story short, I, I uh, focus on the fact that uh, actually Creativity was a way to transform reality, but not always a way to create new things. And uh, that's why I, I call this tool um, the chemistry curse, because it refers to uh, you know the first the first principle of uh, of uh, modern chemistry, which is I guess you know nothing is creating, nothing is lost, everything is transformed. And I call it a curse because the guy who um, who, who made this up, his name was Lavoisier. He was a, 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 a Maudit Francais, who was a Frenchman. And uh, actually he uh, counter, he made a, a contradiction of this because uh, actually he lost something which he never gained again. He lost his head because he was guillotined during the revolution uh, because uh, um, uh, in, uh, he was a chemist, but he also he was a noble. So uh, as, um, as everyone at that time, he got shortened. So this is uh, more or less what it is about. It's the idea that every time you produce something, you create something, you have your feeling that you create something from nothing, but actually comes from somewhere. And most of the time, it also creates uh, negative outcomes. That's more or less the idea. And if I want to go further on the comparison or the metaphor, it's the idea that it's like a... Um, Creativity could be like a, a, a chemical uh, experience. You experiment. Sorry, you have you have uh, the the your your material in the first time, your material. You have a um, operation, uh, 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 something which transforms, and then you have an outcome. So, as an example, you have water H two O. You have uh, uh, electrolyze. Is that or electrolyte? Sorry. And then you have uh, both oxygen and hydrogen. And the idea is that um, sometimes you forget that you got oxygen, which is what you're looking for, but you also got hydrogen you have to take care of. So the idea of um, this tool is to say, what is the negative outcome of my solution? And I'm not talking about all the things I'm gonna use to make this happen. I'm thinking about once I've destroyed the problem, where will the next problem pop up? This is more or less what it is about. So in, in this example of, of, uh, of uh, creating oxygen from, from water is what do I do with the hydrogen uh, uh, molecule, which is something I, I was not looking for? And how do I make sure that this is something I'm gonna take care of in my solution? You have any question on this or does it make sense? Okay, so this is what I'm gonna suggest. I'm, I'm gonna offer a, um, a general uh, um, challenge, a, a challenge that we can all share. And we're gonna work on, on two levels. First level will be what, uh, who's, who's involved, who's part of the stakeholders or, or the ones that are going to uh, to get the solution or to enjoy the solution or to suffer from the solution. And then we're gonna see what has been transformed and what is um, uh, left as a negative outcome. So we're gonna do this in, in uh, two to three uh, different levels. So my idea is maybe I can share something. So this is this idea of you need 
So uh, in this example, the creative process is the is the arrow, and uh, the problem or the the beginning is uh, on the left, and on the right you have the solution. So you're looking for oxygen, but you also have two molecules of hydrogen you have to take care of. So my uh, my suggestion for to work together on is uh, the following one is this is the the creative challenge we're going to work on is how might we make man camp real life happen this year so how are we going to make this happen considering the fact that we have different uh, uh, different situations uh, 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 lockdown the fact that last year there was nothing and blah 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 but the thing is instead of focusing on how might we we're going to just uh, Im we're going to imagine that it's it's happened we made it. So the solution has been found. We don't know which one. We don't care about which one. We just see, OK, what would be the outcomes? It's easy to understand the positive outcomes, but what would be the negative ones? And what would we get from Minecom this year that we would not be happy with? OK, does it make sense so far? So my first question would be, who's involved? Let's um, take um, a list of um, stakeholders, participants, blah, blah, blah. And let's uh, find out who might be involved. And, and we're going to make a, a list of maybe uh, four to five different stakeholders. Maybe you could uh, put them in the chat. What do you think, Nushin? Yeah, let's put it in the chat so that we see who's coming up. So who would be involved in the fact that Mancamp has succeeded? We're not looking for uh, stakeholders who would be part of the solution, but part of the result. This is very important to make a difference. So participants, organizers, educators, trainers, facilitators, bananas, artists, long distance participants, hosts, What else? Entertainers, venue organizers, presenters. Writers, dancers, speakers. OK, so as you can see, already some of us are uh, pointing out maybe um, people who are part of the solution or part of different options. Uh, I mean, when we talk about dancers and performers, we're talking already about something which is one of the possible solutions, but it, it won't be uh, every time the same. So the idea is that we're going to focus on the, the unavoidable um, parties, uh, sorry, stakeholders. The second question, question sorry, I'm going to ask is to focus on the the oxygen, which means what positive outcome do we expect from income being held? So we just talk about, let's put uh, the, the timeline on after Mancamp or during Mancamp, not before Mancamp, just really after and before what is going, yeah, new ideas. Inspiration, expensive things, stronger community, connection, happiness, reconnection, empathy, new relations and friendship, new perspectives on the future, hopes, yes. Um, sorry, uh, it's very, uh, this is very, uh, how can I say, not wishy-washy, but it's very uh, uh, positive and, and, um, and, and um, emotional. Uh, could we speak about also about um, uh, concrete material, uh, concrete outcomes, economic outcomes as well, projects, resilience, okay, new directions. Uh, uh, yeah, less money in bank balance. Oh, you're already in the the <laughs> in the part. Yeah, funding for next year, new clients. Thank you, Judith. 
new presenters, new process being developed, say no to failures, rental for venue, new co-workers. Okay, I think you got it. Now, we are going to focus on uh, several, uh, sorry, I have to see how many people we are. Uh, we are 14, so we need maybe, uh, let's say five stakeholders we're gonna work on, okay? So I suggest, as uh, considering uh, uh, what you said, I suggest new participants is one. Washington, you write it down. New participant is one. Uh, organizer, organizers is two. Uh, presenters is three. Um, venue is four. And um, Tim, who would you add as a um, usual suspect? Sorry, I can't hear you. I would say the bananas, the helpers, they're really important. And they're also important in terms of the, the growth of audience as we move forward. They're kind of like interns in some way. They're actually quite important. Okay, so. Okay, so we make a difference between organizers, which would be the head, and bananas, which who, who, who would be logistics. Okay, That's so good if, if you agree with that, okay. So we have bananas, so logistics, uh, head, uh, new participants, presenters, venue. Okay. We need also maybe older participants, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so the idea is the following. For each of them, you're gonna be a part of a group. And uh, we are going to think about what do they lose if Man Camp has happened? What did they lose afterwards? And it can be, can be money, time, work, uh, it can be also uh, trust, it can be knowledge, it can be happiness, it can be whatever, something they lose because it has happened. Okay, so we have also to refer to today's situation and also that on the fact that it has happened and what's next. Okay, so I suggest that uh, maybe uh, we form groups of uh, two to three people Okay, very good. So the questions are, what do I lose as a stakeholder, as an organizer, once I've done Mein Kampf? What is my negative outcome from succeeding in my creative challenge? Okay, and try to be very open to the kind of things you might lose. It can be money, it can be resources, it can be material. It can be blah, blah, blah. But you have to have the in mind the fact that everything that comes in positive uh, outcome uh, uh, from, uh, from Mein Kampf also produces a negative one. Okay? It would be okay. Okay? Uh, Edward, do, yes, does, each group, does each group do one? Or yes. are we? Okay. Each group does group one. Does one. Okay. Yeah. And, and you see who uh, by the name of your group. Yes. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Let's go. All right. Hi there. So, how did it go? Can you raise your hands, the ones that have, have not found negative out, uh, outcome for their stakeholders? Okay. So um, maybe we could try one or two um, examples. Um, let's say, Matteo, uh, would you like to share? I, I was in the group of organizers. I don't know if uh, Nusha put me with some intention because uh, I was an organizer for so many times. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course we have, some negative effect on your classic uh, normal work because you lose mm -hmm. some contact with the clients, maybe some money. But my, my idea that I shared, 
you lose may say something some capacity to be in the real life with conflict so i give an example i was i came back from my camp one one year and there was a newer airport and the taxi driver was so bad with me that i can't i can't believe it because uh, i was for 10 days in heaven a paradise everybody loves me everybody says thank you matteo you are great sometimes i fail everybody says wow you fail now in the real life it was a part of your capacity to be <laughs> to be ready to <laughs> to speak with the taxi driver in new york so that's uh, that's a i think like organize sometimes you lose what means to organize in the real life with the real conflict of interest and something mm. like that. Especially, <laughs> yeah, that's very good because it's especially in a situation where a conflict of interest will be way more difficult to handle because of the COVID, because of the fact that money is tied, because of the fact that everybody's uh, upset and blah, blah, blah. Thank you very much, right. Matteo. Judith, I don't know in what group you were, would you, would you care for sharing? Yeah, I was in the group of the venue mm -hmm. um, and uh, we found out that after Mind Camp, uh, we as the venue people, we have seen lots of creative people. And after that, we think, oh, my life is really boring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so we see really the difference between all those happy people and then the normal life again. Okay, and how would be how would be would it be more stressful considering the our sanitary situation? Yeah, maybe maybe it's it's even more difficult now because mm -hmm. then you see the restrictions you have and um, mm -hmm. and that maybe you you do not have the capacity of the creative thinking of making the best of it. Mm -hmm. Very good. Excellent. Does someone care? Someone would like to share? Yes, Kaz. Um, I'm, I'm actually surprised because what the organizing people said and the venue people said, we in the new participants group said mm -hmm. too, in that once it's over, there, there's kind of a, a unbalance Depression? Like you're going, you're going back to the real world, which isn't mm -hmm. the world that, the the energetic world you just came from, and mm. then there's kind of a letdown. Yeah, and this letdown, which all, every year happens, to be true, okay, uh, is all, all the more important this year if if mine can happens because of the situation. So it, it's become a more important negative outcome than than ever. So once we've done that, we could also think about the fact that, uh, uh, as an example, uh, regular participants cannot come because they are tight on money, because there are not so many rooms. And so there will be more um, um, old participants that will, not, will, that will be frustrated and blah, blah, blah. There are many different negative outcomes that happen. The question is, once you've, um, you've listed them, you have to ask, you, you may ask yourself uh, two different questions, uh, which I'm going to uh, uh, share with you right now. The first one would be, and it's going gonna, it's gonna, to uh, improve your clarification stage. Where do we care? So do we want to prevent this to happen? Or do we say, okay, that's the price to pay. And if it happens, do, you, do we want to cure it? meaning that we are going to bring in the solution something which is going to cope with that. As an example, we, if we decide that uh, it's very important to make sure that uh, every participant doesn't got, get depressed afterwards this year, we have to cure it by preparing already something which will be a follow-up of Minecamp, as an example. If uh, we want to prevent it, we may also uh, imagine something that is before mind camp that make people understand what's going on. And we can also make a different uh, shape of mind camp so that people don't go high too quickly, uh, which will prevent them that not <laughs> to go down too quickly as well. So that's more or less the idea is once we've done that, we don't know how mind camp is going to happen. We don't know 
where it's gonna happen, for how long, uh, with what money, whatever. We don't have the solution, but we already know that there are some things we can put into our uh, balance, which are not only uh, new challenges, but sometimes are part of solutions as well. Because if we say that, we may also come up with a solution which will make Mancom less uh, costly or easier to organize. Or, so this negative outcome can become a, a positive insight uh, to make a better solution, which means better applied to the real situation, but also better with, with more efficiency within the solution itself. So, yes, Tim. I, I think one of the things that I really like about this is that you know, often we, we, we identify problems and, and by virtue of identifying them, we sort of assume it means we have to solve them. And what you're saying is that sometimes, yeah, you identify a problem and you basically accept it. You say, yeah, if this is an outcome, it may be a problematic outcome, but we're okay to accept it. Or we say that the trade-off is, 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 is reasonable, you know, that that's, that's fine. And it's so interesting to look at a problem and say, you don't have to solve it necessarily. You just want to recognize that it might be there. Mm -hmm. That's really fascinating and I love it. Yeah, that, that's, that's one thing. And the second thing is that sometimes your problem also disappears and replaced by, and is replaced by another problem. As an example, of course, it's, it's really theoretical, but it says, it, it could be, uh, in this case, could be, uh, well, the problem we have or the challenge we have to, to think of is not how might we create mind camp again, but how might we make sure that our community is on top level, whatever happens? Which means maybe it's going to mind come, maybe it's another uh, format, maybe it's nothing uh, which is which is uh, difficult because we know the outcome is going to be. So actually, we can have three kinds of um, uh, um, results. One is uh, we uh, um, we make the problem more accurate. We know uh, more uh, precisely where the solution would lie. The second is we understand that the problem is not so important, or we can cope with that just like you said. And the third one is that we change the problem because we understand that our wish is not what reality is waiting for. Questions or they want to add anything? Oh, thank you, Edouard. That was fabulous. And it just thank made me think much. about so many things that I don't even consider. So mm -hmm. thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, very useful, Edouard, very useful. Thank you Thank very you. much. I just have one comment on that because it's the chemistry curse. It also means that when you go in these areas, you also might lose some of your eagerness and positivity on the on on the, the challenge because it goes into the negative side of creativity. That's the price to pay because you know nothing is created and nothing is lost. Eduard, please apply to the, our next CREA conference. Yes, I will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope there is room left. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it also makes me think, it's Alison, it also makes me think if nothing can, if matter cannot be created or destroyed and you have an idea, so you come up with a new idea, what does that mean for, does that mean another idea disappears somewhere? Or something else has to happen to get that balance keeping keeping that balance um just a oh, question very no interesting uh, uh well maybe the idea is is it doesn't uh, destroy another idea but maybe it destroys what makes this idea being possible ah okay mm. okay i like it okay mm. very nice thank you edouard Thank Merci you very beaucoup. much for your listening. Merci, Merci beaucoup. You. That was Thank great. You.